So today's video is about linear or not. So we're going to be looking at some tables and deciding if they're linear or not. To be linear, there has to be a constant rate of change. So it has to be a constant rate of change between both the X and the Y. So let's look at example one. Let's look at our X's to start with. Your X's go from two to four. So what do you do to two to get to four? You add two. What do you do to four to get to six? You add two. What do you do to six to get to eight? You add two. Oops, and I was about to write eight there. Then let's look at the Y's. What do you do to four to get to seven? You add three. What do you do to seven to get to 10? You add three. What do you do to 10 to get to 13? You add three. So because these are constant, constant means the same, three plus three plus three plus two plus two plus two, that means it is a linear function. So let's look at number two. Look at your x's first. One to two, you add one. Two to three, you add one. Three to four, you add one. Five to seven, you add two. Seven to 11, you add four. 11 to 17, you add six. In order for it to be linear, you have to be adding or subtracting the same number. So this is not linear because that is not a constant rate of change. Constant means it would have to add two every single time or add four every single time or add six every single time. Because it's adding different amounts, it is not linear. So let's look at number three. Let's check out our x's. Negative three to negative one, you add two. Negative one to one, you add two. One to three, you add two. Three to five, you add two. Let's look at our y's. How do I get from nine to one? I subtract eight, one to one is zero. I don't even need to keep going because they're not constant. I can't subtract eight here and then nothing here. So it is not linear. So let's look at number four. Negative three to zero, you add three. Zero to three, you add three. Three to six, you add three. Let's look at the y's. Negative five to negative one, you add four. Negative one to three, you add four. And three to seven, you add four. That means it is linear. Now five and six are a little bit different. On five and six, I'm telling you they are linear. So we need to fill in the missing blanks knowing that they are linear. So let's deal with our x's first. How do you get from negative four to negative two? You add two. Negative two to zero, you add two. So that means between zero and whatever that number is, I have to add two. So what's zero plus two? Two. Two to four, I add two. Four to the next number, I add two. So what does that next number have to be? Six. Let's do the same thing with the y's. What do I do to one to get to five? Add four. Five to get to nine, add four. So nine plus four is 13. And then 13 plus four is 17. 17 plus four is 21. So let's look at number six. Negative eight to negative five, you add three. So that means we're gonna take negative five and add three. So negative five plus three is negative two. Negative two plus one, or negative two plus three is one. One plus three is four. Now down here in the Y's, I have to look here from negative eight to negative five. From negative eight to negative five, I add three. So now I've got to go back here to the negative 16. So negative 16 plus three is negative 13. Sorry, there's a mistake here. Because that's not actually Negative 
So we're gonna forget about those first two and just go from negative eight, negative five, and on. Sorry about that. So from negative eight to negative five, we add three. So we add three to negative five and we get negative two. We add three to negative two and we get one. So that is what your assignment is today. You're going to be deciding if they're linear or not and filling in the missing blanks.